Hello there, and welcome to my slideshow all about health and disease. For the first part, I'm just going to talk about the definition of health. As we all know, the WHO defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So, can you still have a disease and be in good health? Well, of course you can. There are a lot of people living with things like asthma, haemophilia, and even AIDS, and they go about their daily business with no problem. So how can we keep in good health? Well, the best solution is to know that prevention is better than cure. You should keep your hands clean, keep cuts clean, take regular exercise, eat a well-balanced diet, and if you are in any doubt, you should always see a doctor. How can we keep a healthy diet? An easy way to keep a healthy diet is to check out the food pyramid. At the base of the healthy diet pyramid, are rice and alternatives like noodles, bread, cereals and pasta, all foods from grains. Your daily meals should include largest numbers of servings from these foods each day. One level up on the diet pyramid includes the foods that come from plants, vegetables and fruits. Most people need to eat more of these foods for the vitamins, minerals and fibre they supply. On the third level of the pyramid are foods that come mostly from animals, meat and alternatives like beef, lamb, mutton, pork, poultry, fish, nuts, cheese. These foods are for protein, calcium, iron and zinc. At the tip of the pyramid shows fats, oils, sugars and salts. These are foods such as cooking oils, butter, sugars and desserts. These foods provide mostly calories and little else nutritionally. Most people should eat these sparingly. To help prevent getting ill in the winter, you should always remember to don't go out in your pants, you'll probably just catch pneumonia or the flu. So wrap up one and avoid other people that are sick. And just like in the winter, at the opposite end of the year, you should be aware of your environment. It's very hot, so drink plenty of fluids and don't stay in the sun too long. If of course you are on medication, then you shouldn't over medicate. If you are on multiple medicines, you should always check with your doctor to make sure that none of, them, none of the drugs react with each other. And try not to take too much yourself. Remember, many side effects can happen from over medication, such as sleeplessness, hallucinations, damage to organs slow reactions, you know, stuff like that. Now for part two. What is disease? Well, a definition of disease can be an abnormal condition of the body or mind that causes discomfort or dysfunction. Here I'll tell you about a few categories of disease. A physical disease is one that, will cha that causes physical changes in the body, such as lung cancer, where tumors grow inside the lungs, or leprosy. Another type of disease is, def is a deficiency disease. This is caused by a lack of vitamins or nutrients that the body usually requires, such as scurvy, caused by a lack of vitamin C, and rickets, caused by a lack of vitamin D. Another type of disease is a degenerative disease. This is something that will affect the body over a long period of time, such as Parkinson's disease, which affects the mind, or rheumatoid arthritis, which affects the bones and the joints. Some diseases can also be inherited, such as haemophilia, which stops the blood from being able to clot, or cystic fibrosis, which causes mucus to build up in the lungs. When viruses attack the body, it's known as a viral disease. An extremely dangerous example would be smallpox, which is mostly extinct now, the more common and much less severe, cold. When a parasite affects your body, it's known as having, you're known as having a parasitic disease. These parasites come in the smallest ones, like, such as scabies, which dig and burrow into the skin and, causes, and cause irritation, and larger ones, such as tapeworms, which are ingested and can grow up to 12 feet long in the stomach, feeding off the body's nutrients. Other diseases, or shall we say disorders, are the mental disorders that don't cause any change in the body by themselves, but cause change in the mind and often behaviour. An example would be schizophrenia which causes hallucinations, auditory delusions, and disorganized thinking. Or a less severe example, agoraphobia, which is a fear of wide open or unfamiliar spaces. So how are diseases distributed in different areas around the world? Well, three important terms in epidemiology to describe different spreads of diseases are epidemic, pandemic, and endemic. An epidemic is a disease that spreads rapidly and extensively by infection and affecting many individuals in an area of population at the same time. A pandemic is similar to an epidemic but spreads much further, can, can be over a continent or even worldwide. When a disease is prevalent in an area over long periods of time, it is considered to be endemic in that area. 
the, if the disease was somehow able to spread quickly, it would then become an epidemic. Another two terms are used to describe how long a disease will last, either long term or short term. An acute disease lasts for just a short time, but can begin la rapidly and have intense symptoms. In contrast, a chronic disease will often have symptoms that show slower, and the disease will last a longer period of time. Now let's compare two different diseases. The first one I'll show you is cholera. In Africa, in the year 2000, there were nearly 120,000 cases of cholera reported, and over 4,500 deaths caused by one tiny bacteria. However, in Europe in the year 2000, cholera bacteria only had 35 reported cases, and there were no deaths. Now we'll compare the acquired immune deficiency syndrome, as known as AIDS. In Asia, at the end of 2007, there were 5 million people living with AIDS, and nearly 400,000 deaths. This counts to a 0.3% of the population in Asia living with the AIDS virus. However, in Western Europe and America, there were only 2 million people living with the virus. A higher percentage of the population though at 0.4%. And in total the virus caused only 31,000 deaths. Why is there such a difference? Well, if we look at cholera, we know that cholera is spread by bacteria in water, and this map will show us where the, the best, the highest spreads of the virus. Central and South America, Central, East and Southeastern Africa, and most of Eastern Asia too, simply because the bacteria is spread by bacteria in untreated water. In places like Europe and North America that have better tr water treating technology, bacteria is a lot less prevalent. However, with AIDS, a lot of people just assume that the only way of contracting AIDS is through sexual transmission. A lot of people infected are also drug addicts that share needles and children born to HIV and AIDS infected mothers, either while, af while as fetuses or during breastfeeding. This map helps us see the spread of the disease, such as the dark red areas where the disease is most prevalent, at 16 to 30 percent of the population, moving down to the yellow areas, which are only 0.5 to 1 percent of the population, and the grey areas are is where information is not available. Nearly all tra AIDS transmissions can be avoided by just no being aware of the disease. And using common sense, you should know that sharing needles and having unprotected sex can lead to many problems, not just AIDS. Well, thank you for your time. I hope you have enjoyed my small slideshow on health and disease.